There is no despair in the world. Talk to Hashem for one hour every day. Every day of our life, yearn, pray, and make a practical effort to live in Eretz Israel. There's only one necessary path, and that's simplicity. Welcome to the Simple Life Wrestle Podcast. I am Akiva Nachman. Thank you for tuning in. This episode is in the merit of Chava Amuna Bat Sarah Leah Nava Bat Chava Amuna, Bezala Moshe Bin Chava Amuna, Malka Rivka Bat Chava Amuna, Aliyah Zipporah Bat Chava Amuna, Bat Yechaya Bat Chava Amuna, Yosef Simcha Bin Chava Amuna. Also for the protection of all the IDF soldiers and for the protection and safe release of all the hostages, the protection of Klal Yisrael, and for all those who may be feeling that they can't get close to Hashem and they're feeling discouraged. Kodesh Tov to you all. We just entered into the month of Av, the nine days. This is a very, 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 very serious time where we are we're curtailing our joy. This is the day uh, on this very, very tragic day. This is when both temples were destroyed. So it's a time to really mourn for the destruction of those those temples. And may the third temple be built speedily in our days. When the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, Hashem's Shekhinah, his, his presence, left. And so one of the things that we are mourning for is the absence of that presence. It's a time now where we're crying out that Hashem reestablishes that presence again in Jerusalem. And maybe that's the feeling throughout all of Klal Yisrael, is that absence and it's a distance that we feel. And I know for me, it's I've been feeling very, very, uh, very heavy. It's it's been it's been a tough, tough week for me. I'm so grateful for Rebbe Nachman because no matter what I'm going through, I can always find some encouragement in in his writings. So in Shif Chei Haran, which is the praise of Rebbe Nachman, and I'm reading from Rebbe Nachman's wisdom. I'm on page 25. And I'll, I'll skip around just a little bit, but in Lesson 10, it talked about the main way the Rebbe attained what he did was simply through prayer and supplication before God. He was very consistent in this. He would beg and plead in every way possible, asking that God have mercy and make him worthy of true devotion and closeness. And what helped him most were his prayers in the language he usually spoke, which was Yiddish. And so for those who may have may not have heard uh, one of the episodes where I talk about Heat Bodedut, and Rebbe Nachman, and he Bodedut is is basically secluded prayer. You taking time out from your day. Rebbe Nachman recommends that taking an hour a day from your life and and talking to Hashem, pouring out your heart to Hashem in the language you usually speak. And so Rebbe Nachman did this in his native language, or uh, which was which was Yiddish, and he would find a secluded place and set aside to express his thoughts to God. Speaking in his own language, he would beg and plead before God, and he would make use of all sorts of arguments and logic, crying that it was fitting that God draw him close and help him in his devotion. He kept this up constantly, spending days and years engaged in such prayers. He mentioned that his father's house had a small garret that was partitioned off <clears throat> as a storehouse for hay and feed. He would hide himself there, chanting psalms, screaming quietly, begging God to make him worthy of drawing himself close to him. He had a practice of chanting only the verses in psalms that speak of prayer and the cry to God. He would go through the entire book of psalms in one stretch, saying only these verses and leaving out the rest. Beyond all this, the main thing was his own prayers. Emanating from his heart in his own language, he would pray and argue before God, making up petitions and arguments as he went along. He would beg and plead that God make him worthy of true devotion. Prayers such as these helped the Rebbe achieve his greatness. And we heard this explicitly from the Rebbe's own lips. So then lesson 12, still, it always seemed to the Rebbe that all his prayers were being disregarded. He was sure that he was not wanted at all and was being pushed further and further away from any true devotion. For he saw the days and years passing and he still felt far from God. After all his prayers, all his prayers, he felt he had not been worthy of drawing close to God at all. It was as if his words were never heard and he had been totally ignored all this time. It seemed as though everything was being done to push him away from God. But the Rebbe remained. But the Rebbe's resolve remained. But the Rebbe's resolve remained firm, and he did not abandon his ground. It was not easy, for there were many things to discourage him. 
He prayed and pleaded before God, begging to be worthy of true devotion, and he still saw no results. He felt as if he were being totally ignored. There were times when he became discouraged. Rabbi Nachman. Uh-huh. Rabbi Nachman said he became discouraged, and he let his conversations with God lapse for several days. When I, when I read this, something lit up on the inside of me, and, and I'm like, wow, Rabbi Nachman let his conversations lapse for multiple days. He, he, was, he got discouraged. He had hard times. He felt that he was being ignored from Hashem. He felt that he was being ignored. And that, and that was my conversation that he brought to do today, actually the past couple of days. And I'm like, God, please help me because I feel far. I feel far. But then he would remind himself that he should be ashamed for criticizing God's ways. He said to himself, God is truly merciful and compassionate, and he certainly wants to draw me near to him. Then he was able to strengthen his resolve again. He would begin anew, pleading and speaking before God. This happened many times. It's happened many times, not just once. We see here that Rebbe Nachman, he had struggles in his devotion. And there were times where he felt discouraged. And he felt like literally God was pushing him away. And, um, and this, I, I've personally found a lot of comfort in this. And after reading this, I was reminded that I just have to stay strong. I just have to strengthen my resolve, and I have to start over. That's all. Rabbi Nachman taught that. You just start again. Today, I'm starting over. I'm starting over. And that's so refreshing because that's not the normal mindset. That's not the normal framework. That's not the normal way that we typically go about things like that. When we feel like we are far and we've messed up or we can't connect, we feel like it's like, man, it's a far stretch for me to get back to where I need to be. And it's like, no, that, that's the work of the Yitzhahara. What Rabbi Nachman comes to teach is that, no, you just start over. It's as simple as that. I heard my Rav, Rav David Kalman, say this the other, the other day on one of his teachings I was listening to. He said that Rabbi Nachman said that if he was to fall off or have a fall or to make a mistake or whatever, all he would have done was done to Shuva. And he would have worked his way back to the high level that he was at. He just would have did Teshuvah and he would have started over. So I pray that we can all start over, just like Rebbe Nachman. And we should come to realize and know that Hashem is compassionate. And his love for us is indescribable. And he loves us so much. He wants to draw us close to him. And I pray that we can all live with this today. And I pray that as we're mourning for the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash and the absence of Hashem's presence to continue to be drawn closer and closer and closer to God and that we're worthy to have His presence here with us again. I love you guys very much. Stay strong.